Happy April Fools, fools! It's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you yet another video. So as you know, and if you don't, where have you been hiding? Every Thursday we have this little get together called Extreme Talk. It's at 6 p.m. Pacific time, for my convenience, and just to upset the people on the East Coast. I'm sorry, man. But we've got to uphold strict standards here at Extreme Sequences. So six, it will stay. And no, we don't record these. But we do some troubleshooting. And we do some lighthearted banter. And we just make fun of each other. It's a good group to get together. And I usually have an occasional libation of some wine. Yeah, that's right. A little Cabernet for Ron on Thursdays. That's the only day he gets to enjoy any type of libation. So why not enjoy it with his buddies and pals over at the Extreme Sequence of Syndicate? Do you have to be in the Syndicate? Nah, you can just join. We don't care. You don't, you don't even have to say anything. You can just watch. But I digress. Let's get back. Let's put the train back on the tracks. Last week, we did some training on uh, folder structure. And I said, you know, I'll make a video on this because, you know, I know other people were uh, enjoying the libations of Al K. Hall that evening and probably don't remember. So let's make this a quick, fun little tutorial. What I've got here is X Lights 10 that is pointed at this old Christmas folder. We'll just say that this is last year's. And for most people, there's not any reason you need to create a brand new folder every year. I usually do this, but I have different reasons for doing so. If you have last year's folder and you're simply adding on to your show, you should just be able to keep everything here. But some people just want to start over. Or if you're brand new to the hobby, you have no choice. You're starting from scratch whether you like it or not. So we'll talk about that as well. But as you see in this folder here that I have, this is sort of a test folder that I used last week with just a sequence in there. There is a folder structure here that's very important. And some of these, if you don't create them, they will be created for you. And I'm going to go down the list and explain this. The 3D folder simply is for a 3D layout that has the MTL files, the skins, and of course the OBJ file. That's what that guy is right there. If you're not running 3D, don't worry about it. If you are running 3D and you do want to copy your entire show from one folder to another, make sure you bring that over and maybe possibly link it to your new location. Just because you copy everything from here, from this old Christmas show to this new Christmas show, doesn't mean that it's pointing to the right location. You simply copied everything over here. This is still going to point to everything that's over here. And that means audio, your backups, your color curves, faces, images, music, presets, shaders, all that stuff is going to be pointed over that way. That's why you've got to think about this. If you plan on just switching everything over, you may end up telling it that it needs to point to new locations. Okay. So that may not be a benefit for you. And I'm not sure why you would do that anyway. Okay. If you are brand new, there are some folders that we want you to create. Uh, audio will create itself if you're importing a sequence from somebody that included the music. That's not going to be very often due to copyright issues. So it's a good idea to create a uh, folder called, and I, would, I believe I would just call it music. I believe that's the one. Audio is not the one it's going to create automatically for you. I believe it's music. Uh, the other two folders that will create for you automatically is images and videos and shaders. If you import a sequence that has videos, images, or shaders, and you don't have a folder called images, videos, and shaders, it will create it for you and stick them in there. That's a great thing. That's a beautiful thing. And even if you go ahead and create them, it will still recognize them and put them in there. Just make sure you spell it this way. Images, videos, shaders, plural. Thank you. The rest of this, the palettes, it will create for you automatically. The faces it will create for you. The color curves it will create for you. The backups it will create for you. Uh, the X schedule data it will create for you. I don't use X schedule anyway, so I don't need it. So there we go. What will it not create that I suggest you create? Okay, that's a very, very good question. 
uh, I would make sure I create a folder called imports. Why would I do this? Well, if you get sequences from various people, whether you're getting shared sites or you're getting them from other vendors, uh, I would put those information, I would put the, that information in here. Uh, not a dog turd company who sells sequences, Extreme Sequences, and XYZ Corp who sells sequences. These are fictitious examples except for the middle one. That's the real deal. But there's a lot of people out there selling sequences this day, like hot dog stands in uh, New York City. And uh, they don't all taste the same. I'll just tell you that. They, they really don't. Some you really got to put a lot of mustard and ketchup and relish and crap like that on to even swallow the damn thing. But I digress once again. Let's get back to this. What do you need to have in a new folder? So if you're brand new, you come over to this folder and we want to create a few things. So why don't we just do this manual? Let's just create a folder. Let's just call this uh, music. There we go. Right click, new. Let's just call this shaders. Even though we know it's gonna make it, let's just get in the habit of doing this. Images. Videos. And imported sequences. So I, sometimes I just call this imports. And inside here, you can list your various sequence providers, and then you can drop those zip files in there. The zip files are very important because the old way, uh, you had to unzip the files and kind of put them in a place. Today, thanks to Xlights, uh, all you have to do when you're importing a sequence is point it at the zip file and say, yippee ki -yay. Here we go, and it will do everything for you. And it will automatically bring in your images and your shaders and your videos and put them into those little holding containers for you while opening up the sequence and allowing you to map over like-for-like -like props. That's pretty cool. All right, what else do we need over here? Anything else? I don't think so. I don't think so. We've got our imports, music shaders, images, videos. Let's leave that alone. Now I did tell you at the beginning of this that this is pointed at Christmas old. It is, my Christmas old simply is my layout for my Christmas show. If I go to my controllers and tell this to permanently change to my desktop to Christmas new, this is what happens. And I have no layout, I have nothing going on, but look at what happened to the folder structure. Let's go up one and let's go Christmas new. And suddenly we see that it has added one folder that we didn't have before. It created the backup folder. Well, that's cool. I like that. Why did it create the backup folder? Well, let's take a look. If we look in the preferences, it is automatically choosing to use the show folder as a backup directory, which is what we had in the older layout. So that's good. That means when it backs up, it's going to back up in the root directory of your new Christmas show. Or if you're first time uh, hobbyist with X lights, it's simply going to put it there. Okay. It's going to back up on launch. It's going to back up subfolders and it's going to purge the backups every 30 days. I think that is sensible. You can also create a, alternate backup, an alternative directory, if you will. Uh, if you choose to backup on save, you're going to end up with a lot of backups and you may fill up a drive. So do be careful with that. Uh, here's our viewing. Nothing really here to write home about. I won't get into all the details of this. I have other videos for that. Uh, but what I do want to get into is what are we using for our render cache directory? Use show folder. I'm sort of a fan of this. I don't want this pointing in other places. I have a dedicated drive for my show folder and that's where I like to keep it. Also my FSEQ files, save FSEQ. Where is it saving? Guess what? It's using my show folder. I like keeping it contained in there. I've tried placing it other places and I just think when you're troubleshooting, it's just easy to do this. Okay, all right. Next, anything else? Output, random effects, colors, other. Not really. Okay, we won't get into this other stuff. So really it's about the backups and sequences. 
where is everything being saved so that when we're in this new Christmas directory, it goes where it is supposed to go. That's very, very important. And as you can see here, look there, I just have my first RGB effects backup. That's sort of a backup file pending, waiting for something to happen. And I don't mind those being there. At this point, if we want, we can go ahead and do our layout and start designing our show and then importing. And there we go. Okay, so at this point, why don't we just take this off of 3D since we're not using 3D on this. Let's put in our Christmas tree. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's just put in a couple of windows. Yes, oh, gorgeous, love it. Let's just click save and let's go back here. We don't have anything in controller, so don't really care about that. This is, we're just, you wanna design this first and you can figure out all this stuff in the controllers. But what might've changed in the folder structure now of the Christmas new? Oh, we have some files that we didn't have before. We've got X scheduled data. We've got X lights, networks, RGB effects. And so the RGB effects sort of is the DNA of your X lights and the networking defines everything that has to do in your networking. Even though there's nothing in there specifically, uh, there are values to these things. You just don't naturally see them because there are numbers that represent the channels. But as you see, it starts building things all on its own. That's kind of cool. If I were to create a basic animation with this and just put some effects on here, we'll just put this on the tree. And that is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. That is something. But if we add a value curve, um, let's see what happens here. There we go. Oh, it looks good. Looks good. I'm liking it. Maybe we create something in here that's a little bit different. And we save this, update it. Uh, what might have happened? Don't know. Cool. But now, let me just uh, also we'll render this. We will save as, we'll call this our first show. Oh. Isn't that lovely? Now let's go to our Christmas new. And what do we have? Oh, we have more folders. We have color curves now that are new. We have palettes, render cache, X scheduled data. Here's our FSEQ file. And here is our first show. Look at that. Look at that. Program X lights. We'll look at the properties on this. And this is an XSQ. If it still says .xml on yours, you probably want to maybe start opening those up and resaving those to get the XSQ, because that is the new descriptive language for a X lights sequence. All right, so there's a networks, RGBFX, the main sequence, the FSEQ file, which is what your show player will use to send instructions to the controllers, and the rest of this falls into play. So anyway, uh, I hope this was beneficial and helpful um for the new folks trying to figure out what to do in here and if you're an existing user of x lights hopefully this sheds some light on maybe why it's okay just to stay with your folder that you already have and make your changes there all right gotta run take care folks